Today we're wrapping a hood, a little DIY for everybody. First and foremost, doing a wrap is much like paint when it comes to the prep. The better the prep, the better the result. So we use 70% isopropyl alcohol. Wipe it down really good. Get all of your edges really well. Make sure that it is clean, lint-free, using a microfiber, and uh, then you're ready to go. One of the things that we're gonna do with the hood is you'll notice I have it raised up a little bit. You can take a two by four or four by four, just put it in there. That brings the hood up. So as we're sticking and laying this thing, we have a nice empty edge behind. So as we come around, we can make sure we can set all of our edges really cleanly. And then when we have to trim those edges, we don't have to worry about having excess or touching anything else on the vehicle. So what we're gonna do, I was thinking about how I want to do this. There's a few different ways. You can use a backing cutter, you can do it. But if this is a DIY and somebody's doing this at home on their own, or has you know wife, girlfriend, husband, boyfriend, whatever helping, um, we're gonna do it that way. This is a big piece of vinyl, and it's nice to have that one other person to help you. So what we're gonna do is, I tore off just the corners so we can hold these corners here real quick. Um, and we're gonna use those as our, our tack. Uh, we're gonna tack the corners. I'll show you the proof, what we're doing. When you're peeling vinyl, one of the things you wanna do always, 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 is hold it up nice and high. So if you're doing it, hold it way up off of the ground, as high as it can go, because as you peel that backing, it's gonna create static. And Bryce is gonna reach over here sometime today. There he goes, at a boy, nice job. There we go. Hold it nice and high. It will pull dirt, grime, gunk off the ground. We're gonna swap hands. Whole goal here is to just get it up above. Float it. I'm gonna have to come my way just a little bit. I wanna take a quick peek. Okay, right about there. Just set that. So, I'll show you the proof. This is the proof. There's a little number up here, right here in a circle on this topo. And so my whole goal was checking this thing. So I did a dry run. I laid it up here and made sure, okay, one, I got it facing the right way. Here's the little number. I got that. We're just right up here. So it's right where he wants it. So once we set this, the whole kicker now is doing this so that we don't end up with little adhesive balls, they're called, right? So this is set, we don't wanna shift it. So we're gonna start in the center, but first I'm gonna set these tall ridges to try and eliminate any of the little balls that you'll get by rolling up your vinyl or your adhesive on the backside. So once you set it, we brought it straight down, we're gonna set our high points right there now as i move or shift or do anything with this vinyl along these edges i'm not running it back and forth over that high point which will create little balls of adhesive behind there and you can see it they'll sometimes go away not a hundred percent just do it right the first time you don't have to worry about it i love having wrap gloves uh, it's a phenomenal tool so Pros that are out there are guys that are learning or working to do better. Wrap Glove is phenomenal. Um, I've teamed up with these guys over the years. I've, I've gone through thousands of gloves. Um, if you're interested, wrapglove.com. Use CW Wraps promo code, give you 10% off your next purchase. So I love it. We're gonna go to this next ridge. I'm gonna set this ridge right here. This is our high point. Making sure that we've just got a good, clean set on high point and high point. From there, I'm just gonna make sure this thing is glassed out. So I'll make sure I'm pulling everything good. The way we're gonna start is we have our center. This is loose, everything's loose. All we've set is our high points. I'm gonna come right to the middle here and I'm gonna make sure that right along this edge here, I'm just setting and moving any excess vinyl towards our corners.
and uh, banana buffers. They go on the end of your squeegee right there. If you want to, you can moisten that up a little bit. This is a fresh one. We're doing a matte finish. And so as I'm laying this, I wanna make sure that I'm not leaving squeegee marks or messing up the laminate on this vinyl. So in doing so, I put on a nice fresh buffer, makes it slide really easy and won't leave as many marks on there. So, so if we're gonna get rid of a little bubble like that, this is a little 3M or whatnot poker pen, you just tap a corner. And the reality is if you let it sit there, it's actually gonna deflate down a little bit. See how it's going down? And then you can just rub on it and it'll go. You don't want to, you don't want to take, let's see, this kind of closed off a little bit maybe here. It might have a bubble or two. But what happens is if you have a bubble, a lot of people will just work that bubble and they'll just push it until it gets really tight. Well, if you get a bubble really tight, it blows that bubble up. What you end up doing is you stretch the vinyl. If you stretch the vinyl, when you want it to lay back down, what you're doing is you're stretching it. Now you have excess vinyl compared to what was supposed to be laying down, I guess. So you have to give it some heat um, and it could actually deform and not actually go back down to where you want it. So make sure that you don't overdo a bubble. Um, relax, just work it slowly, be patient. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some deformity or not being able to get rid of that bubble completely. So then you're going to have a wrinkle. And if you're DIYing, you've probably run into that. So just a little tidbit. And this would be easier and I'm going to do it here in a second. Just get up, have a stool, put yourself in a position where you can reach it my big thing right now is all this edge right here i haven't set yet so i don't want to lean against it and start setting all this and having to pull it up and put it back down that will have an effect on your adhesive as well i wet my squeegee a little bit i actually just sprayed some alcohol on it's not necessarily the recommended way to do it but one it's going to show you guys my squeegee strokes a little bit better allows it to slide if you use alcohol it could degrade the adhesive and this will dry out a little bit faster but we go through so many of these, I'm not really too off concerned. So, this will give you guys the ability to see my squeegee strokes a little bit better. I'm gonna swap over to the other side. Overlapping squeegee strokes, you can see I'm usually covering about half of my previous stroke. That just makes sure that you're getting everything nice and clean. As you're using a squeegee, I'm not pulling at it at a 90 degree. You always want to pull. So when I was doing this one, I'm pulling up like this. I'm always making sure that it's at an angle. One way or another, typically you want to be moving your air from underneath towards here, towards here. Since we did this edge right here to get rid of any adhesive bubbles, all this air needs to go from here. Then from that little crown down, I'm gonna move the air that way. Now that we've got this all laid, we'll do these edges. Come right back. Once I've got that set, now I can just take and use the squeegee. I'm gonna to go to 45 and I'm gonna work this. And I'm gonna take this edge right here and this is gonna be my release edge. So everything from here is gonna move outward. That's where my air is going any of my excess vinyl, the ability to make it smooth and flat, glassed out, all goes this direction. Now, I'm right here, right, right down to about this corner. Got a little air trap in here between this edge and this edge, it trapped it a little bit right there. We've done this center down to about here. So I wanna move the final little bit, we'll make sure. And this air, if you get a trapped one in there, it is better to just lift and relay it cleanly and not try and run that bubble out. It's just, there's a good chance uh, when you're using like a 3M vinyl, we got a little bump here. There were a couple chips in this hood. Um, 
they have channels. They have what they call MC channels, micro channels. And uh, those micro channels can trap that air. They'll actually shoot down. Those little channels collapse. And then you can actually create lines of air. So better to, if you can, just pull up, release that air, and make it look pretty. All right. So goal being is now our center is done, right? We've done the edges, flushed it out that way, we flushed it out this way, and this whole center is done, and we've taken all the excess vinyl from this area right here, between these ridges, and we've pushed it out. Now we've got this corner. I'm gonna finish up this side right here, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Do it in an angle, and an angle, and an angle, back and forth. And I can just take it and sweep all of it right out the side. We can take this vinyl and we can actually come this direction with it. It gives us the availability of any wrinkles or movement getting rid of that material. So you're gonna take your hood, corner, and you're gonna give it just a nice little pull, okay? And you're gonna bring it right around that edge, and you're gonna work it down. I'm not overly pulling. Then here, we're gonna spread it out a little bit, come right around that edge. So now, that corner is all clean, it's done. It looks good and we're not, we're not all bunched. We haven't bunched a bunch of stuff. We'll do these corners here in a second, but we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. Another one of those little bubbles. You can even see right there, that one wants to run in a little air channel. Right there. So you're better off right off the bat to either poke it or lift it, one or the other. But if you sit there and try and work it, it's gonna make a little air channel run and you're gonna have lines in your wrap and you don't want lines. By the way, this is 3M IJ180. So again, I'm gonna start at this point. I'm gonna pull outward a little bit. Not hard, just enough to take that center and move this direction, okay? Finish out this top edge right here, right down to that little front crown. I'm just gonna bring it down right here. And sometimes you'll see, if you go like this, you can get a little wiggle in there, and it just lays right down. And I don't have a bunch of fingering. By the way, those are fingers. If you get, those are minute fingers, but little wrinkles. So if you got little wrinkles and they're really tight along this edge, you're gonna end up having those fingers come up, and that's how you're gonna get that puckering and that pull when it comes to your edges. So you wanna make sure that everything is clean along these edges. You shouldn't have a bunch of fingering where these are really tight and small. If you have that, you're gonna have failure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work on just getting around the edges. Now, where we live, right, we're up in the Northwest, so we have a lot of weather, rain, snow, sleet, ice. So whenever I do my edges, I'm not as concerned about a back edge, but definitely my front edge and a little bit of my side edges, I like to have a good amount of roll. Number one, then I don't see the edge color. Two, on the front, if I've got a good eighth to a quarter inch that comes back and underneath, I'm not gonna get ice and whatnot hitting the edge and wanting to roll this up. Not to mention just driving down the road at 70 miles an hour. So we'll start with our corners. I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of the excess. There's a bunch there, and you don't need it. It's in your way. We're gonna take our corner, and this corner, I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit, and all I'm gonna do is take and pull a little bit, and hook it on there. Then I'm gonna run out, and run out, right from those edges. What we're doing is we're kinda of hooking that, not with heat, just pulling that vinyl. A little teeny bubble, we'll pull that up hooking it, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a heat to each of these corners after I do this. 
and it's gonna take and it's gonna suck that right in. I didn't heat it because if I heated it, then I can overstretch it. So right now I'm not overstretching the vinyl per factory specs. When I heat it, it's gonna bring it back to its zero place where it doesn't wanna pull back, doesn't wanna go anywhere, and it'll be happy without wrinkles. Happy vinyl, happy vinyl, yes. Happy corners. <laughs> okay, hit that edge, hit that edge. We're gonna go along here. We're gonna do the same thing here again. I'll lift up just a little bit. I'm gonna pull that out. Make sure I got a nice little corner. Move it out, move it out. A little air, again, better off just to pull up and release. Make sure that's nice and set. Now at that corner, I'm not gonna do anything to it yet. Let it sit, we just heated it. We want it to relax for a second. We're gonna hit this one too. What we're doing is we heated or pulled those. Now you can see that these are hooked right around those edges. That corner right now, I can trim right on that back edge. It's not gonna pull, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's literally just sucked right up on there. Plus it makes my corner clean. You can see there's just no wrinkles and that's what you want when you're doing corners. We're gonna trim off these edges so that we have a little bit of Room. So we're gonna go empty face, back side. Keep a little tension right there. And also, see how much blade I have out? This is right now a guide for me. I'm using the blade behind, so I'm not cutting on the vehicle. And my knife, this part of my knife right here, is actually going along this edge, so it's a guide. So even though it's a cut on the back side of a hood, I like it to be clean. Now on this corner, what we're gonna do is we have this corner right here. I wanna take right underneath that corner and go this way, about an inch. This way, we're gonna just come right back up. And trim that off right there. Move like this. We're gonna come to our corner. I'm gonna trim out from that corner a little bit this way. A little bit that way. A little shimmy shape right there, jeez. Must have been my pre-workout this morning. I'm lit. One of the biggest things is snapping blades continuously. Sharp blades make all the difference. Don't mess around, you don't wanna look, you don't want the edges of your vinyl looking like you had to gnaw on them to cut it, right? So snap a blade, they're not expensive, do it right from the beginning. So narrow my blade down, follow that edge. I'll take that a little bit tighter, there it goes. Close trim on the back side of this thing, and I'll show you guys where we'll cut on this. One, again, don't wanna be cutting all over a vehicle, but if you're gonna do anything, just be smart. Take this, and I want this stuff, just like I said, a little bit farther in, underneath that hood. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it up, and on the back side of this hood, I have a little bit more of a lip, and there's usually a little seam Right there. And it's where they'll uh, use like a glue, right? So really clean. I am barely pressing. If you guys have ever watched me before, cut on my hand, I'm doing the same exact pressure, but with a sharp blade. So I'm not cutting the vehicle, but cutting the vinyl. And you can see here we've got a little bit of wrap around, but on this back side, especially this front edge, we've got it to this little, glue edge on the hood all along there. And that's just gonna give us that safety with the snow, the rain, the ice, which is big. Heat, let it suck around, set that, this. It was a quick little touch of heat, so I didn't 
I'm not gonna stress too much. You don't wanna cut immediately after heating. You wanna always give vinyl just a little bit of time to relax. But since I just barely touched it with the heat just to let it suck up, I'm good to go. When you cut that back edge, you can do it up, hood down. Probably easier with the hood down, but for quickness and ease of filming, we left it up. So if you're working by yourself, <coughs> you're gonna notice sometimes I did a little back and forth. I like to focus on an area. So if I'm doing the sides and the back, everything's got a system. A Little bit of walking back and forth, but did the center, went up top, finish it out, moved down. Did the side, did the side, finish the corner, finish the corner, finish back, finish back. That way you're not missing anything. People wanna get in a hurry, you miss something. This stuff, one little miss, one little edge, and the whole entire thing fails. So part of this type of work is being as perfect as possible. It's kind of what we gotta do. If you want it to last, if you want it to look good. And any of those little buffer squeegee marks, we're just gonna go real easy. One, just if there's any little squeegee marks on a matte finish, you don't wanna go too long with the heat gun because you can actually gloss up that matte finish, right? That's how you wrap a hood. So, tons of detail. Went into it, went slow, went methodically. The reality is if we're wrapping this in the shop, that hood's 10 minutes, start to finish. But I wanted to try and hit every little detail for you guys. I hope that helps. Gives you a few of the techniques so that it comes out looking clean. Corners finished out. I'll let you guys have a few little pictures and snapshots of just how tight everything is up close. And, uh, Hope you enjoyed that video.